Top of the morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the planet Earth. To all the human beings out there, a hearty and healthy Irish hello. Hello, everyone. All right, I think I got the, uh, I think I got the Facebook thing pretty uh, figured out here. I'm looking at myself in the Zoom, and I'm seeing myself looking at myself, going back to myself, talking to myself through Zoom. So I think we're good to go. All right, got a great show for you today on the Celtic Coach Radio Show. We're going to be talking about how to have a simpler life. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, Dermot, that's not actual proper pronunciation, grammatically correct. But uh, our show is grammatically incorrect. So if you want how to have a more simple life or how to have a simpler filled life, and why do you not have a simpler life? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, I've got a lot to say about this because there's certainly uh, a lot of times in my life when uh, life was not simple. So welcome to the show. Everyone, we're here uh, on Facebook Live every Friday from 1 to to 2 Pacific time. Now, I've been doing this radio show for a little over eight years, and I've been doing it at a radio station. And I decided, you know, since we're uh, barricaded at home, I thought I'd give it a go on the old Facebook and uh, having a lot of fun doing it. So I hope you're enjoying the show and, and welcome. All right. Um, I'm, uh, my name is Dermot Butterly, and I am a professional life coach, not one of those weekend warriors. I also do workshops and seminars, and I have a school online for coaches. And uh, I also, as you can tell, love to do radio. So very, uh, very happy to be with you today. All right, let me go through any logistics that we might have. All right, for all the coaches, there's a lot of coaches listening to the show out there. Coaches, on um, June 17th, we're going to have uh, what's called Experience the Art and Science of Business Building. It's a two-and-a-half-hour class with me and one of the greatest coaches on the planet, Catherine Casey, will be coming in to talk to you coaches about being fearless in building your business. So if you would like to be part of that, there are, uh, I think, 45 people. 45 people signed up. We have 50 spaces. So uh, email me at Dermot, D-E-R-M-O-T, Dermot at Erickson, uh, dot edu, And I will, uh, I will send you, just put in, this, in, the, in, the, in the chat or in the subject line, uh, Dermot, save me a seat for the experience in coaching. And that's for any coaches who are interested in being part of this this year's the art and science of business building starting in August fifth, you want to get a an experience of what it's like to be inside the classroom of that program. Uh, this will be uh, immeasurably, measurably or immeasurably, I'm not sure, immensely maybe uh, helpful. All right, um, and of course, the art and science of business building starts the, this year um, August fifth. So if you have an interest in that, you can also reach out to me. And uh, we can uh, answer your questions about that. All right, we're going to be talking about living a simpler life. Now, let's take this one step at a time. In fact, before we do, let me drink some of my tea. And welcome to all the folks that are showing up. Okay. 77% of stress is all about money, at least in the US. 77% of stress is all about money. So you might think to yourself now, well, do people really have a, a simple life if we've got all this stress in the world? Now, I'm going to talk about stress today, but I'm going to talk about it from an inside out perspective, not an outside in perspective where people say, okay, well, you know, the top three things that people, the causes of stress are money, work, and, uh, and poor health. And I will add to that picking potatoes. Because when I was young, my old man used to make me pick potatoes. I would be bent over all day long picking potatoes in a field. That's no word of a lie. You're like, oh, Derby, you're making that up. No, that's what we did when we were kids. We picked potatoes. And if you don't believe me, you can ask my brothers. I don't think my sisters ever got to uh, that pleasure of that gift of picking potatoes, being bent over for eight hours. Um, 
with no food or water. <laughs> I think we had, I think we had actually Tato sandwiches, like white bread with some butter and some chips squashed in, 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 in between it. And, you know, by the time you got lunchtime, you got to the sandwich. Um, the crisps were like, kind of like, uh, they were kind of like paper, but soggy paper on bread. It was, uh, I wouldn't say it was very vitalizing. I wouldn't say there's a whole lot of um, vitamins and nutrients in it, but however, that's, that's got nothing to do with the show at all. All right. If you were to take all the people in America and, and here's the stats, we're giving you some of the science. We call this the art and the science. So I'm going to give you some of the science. If you were to take all the people in America and let's say, and you were to scale their stress, and you were to say to them, okay, so on a scale of one to 10, one is very low stress. And 10 is, you have so much stress that your head is going to explode. Where would you be on the scale? Well, they did, they did a, uh, a poll in America and they found that most people in America, and I'm sure it's around the world, are, are in the middle, they're at 4.9 on the stress scale. That's pretty high. I mean, that is really high. For most people, that's pretty high. And we're going to talk about stress today, but in a, in, a, in a completely different way. Because one of the reasons that we're not living a simpler life is because we're stressed. But... If you read the stats and the science, it'll tell you because it's outside forces. They'll tell you it's because of money. It's because of work, poor health, having to eat cabbage as a kid, or picking potatoes. Now, all of those things are relevant in terms of outside causes. But you see, stress is not an outside cause. The reason that people say my life is complicated my life is stressful my life is not simple dermot at all my life is very difficult they will tell you it from an outside perspective they'll say dermot you don't get it like clients say to me all the time dermot you you don't get it and i say oh what what it might be because i'm irish but what is it what is it i'm not getting here and they say well you don't get dermot that i have a lot of stress in my life you don't get that I'm working nine to five and half the people that I'm working with are, are crazy. And I say, I, I'm sure that's so. But stress doesn't come from the outside world. Stress doesn't come from outside experiences. Now you might say, well, Dermot, I don't have any money. I don't have any food on the table. There's no spuds coming into the house. We're broke. That causes me stress. But the truth of it is that life itself, any experience in life, has to come through you. Not to you. It has to come through you. Every experience that you have, whether it's picking spuds, eating cabbage, throwing broccoli at people, or work, the experience of that comes through you. Now, how does it come through you? That's a good question. Most people think, and myself included for many years, that life is happening to us. And, and, and the truth is that life is happening through, I'm trying to say that now without an Irish accent, because in Ireland, I would say, life is happening through you. People are like, what did he say? Through, through you. Life is happening through you, which means everything that happens to you in the, in the outside world must come through your thinking. It must come through via thought. It has to work that way. Now, I'll give you an example in a moment, but, but I want you to play with this question.
If you had no money, if you had no stressful thinking about money, would you be stressed about money? Give that, I'm going to get, and I'm going to give that to you in a different way. If you had no thinking about whether you, whether you had money or didn't have money, well, I'll make it more specific. If you had no thinking about having no money, would you be stressed about not having any money? The answer is no. Because, see, we don't live in the feeling of money. We don't live in the feeling of outside circumstances. We live in the feeling of our thinking. We live in the feeling of our thinking via thought. So think about it this way. That's a lot of thinking, Dermot. It is, Seamus, I agree. Think about it this way. When you're sitting and you're relaxed, now let's say your bank account is got 20 bucks in it, right? And you know your, 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 your bank account has $20 and that's it. And you're sitting and you're relaxed. Have you noticed that you have less thinking about your bank account when you're relaxed, when your body's relaxed? Now, have you noticed that you have more thinking about your bank account, the $20, you only have $20, when you're putting attention on it, when you're thinking about it? Now, why is that? Very simple. We feel our thinking. You might say, no, Dermot, I, you don't get it. Um, I don't have any money in the bank. That's why I'm stressed. But see, if money was the reason that you were stressed and, and, and money has that a power on you, and I'm just using money, it could be anything. But if money has the power to make you feel stressed when you don't have it, then that means that everybody on the planet who does not have money and wants money would feel stress. And that's not the truth. That's not the truth of people's existence. Now, I'm not saying that you, you have $20 in, the, in your bank account, and so then, you, know, you affirm to yourself, oh, well, I'm broke, but uh, you know, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, it's okay to be broke, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, but it's okay to be broke. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the meaning that we give to what we're thinking about is what causes the stress. The stress is an, in, it's an inner thing, it's not an outer thing. Money cannot make you stressed. You can have stressful worry in thinking, and we feel that thinking, and that's what we call stress. Like, like, like clients come to me, right? And they say to me, Dermot, I really love to have more confidence in my life. my life would be so much more simpler and I'd be able to do what I want to do in my life if I had more confidence. And so now let's take the analogy of coaching. So I say, so, okay, so when, when is coaching not simple to you? When is it stressful? Oh, right before the session, Dermot. And I said, oh, I said, now, what, what's going on right before the session? Oh, I'm thinking now, are they going to like me? Are they going to like the session? Uh, am I going to do okay in the session? Uh, am I, are they going to find out I'm an idiot? Are they going to ask me a question that I, can, I can't coach them through? Are they going to bring a problem that I can't, can't coach them through? And I say, okay, so, so you got a lot of thinking before the session. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. And the session makes me very nervous. The thinking is making you nervous. So this gets better. So then I say to them, okay, I said, now, now what happens when you start coaching people? So your confidence level is really low. Oh, my confidence level is so low. I'm just, I'm so afraid. I've got all this thinking about the client and la, 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 la. 
I say, okay, now, now what, what happens when you start the session? When you're like, you're in the flow and you're talking to the client and you're enjoying the conversation and you know, there's plenty of listening, there's plenty of good questions and so on. And, and the coach says, oh, it's great. It's wonderful. And I say, well, well, where's your confidence? I'm not thinking about my confidence, Dermot, when I'm coaching. I said, oh, really? I said, so when are you thinking that you have low confidence? Oh, before the session, Dermot, when I'm thinking about the session, that's when I know I have low confidence. Now, here's the thing. That person thinks, that coach thinks that confidence is an outside job. They think that their confidence is based on circumstances. But all that's going on is before the session, they've got a lot of insecure thinking. They've got a lot of thinking about this and that and what they're not going to do. I just call it insecure thinking. And so their confidence level is really low. Now, when I ask them, how's your confidence level during the session? A lot of coaches say, oh, it's very high, Dermot. I say, now, how can that be? How can you come to me and say, hey, Dermot, I got really low confidence and I'd like, to, I'd like to work with you for six months, Dermot, on my confidence. And before the session, they got a lot of thinking. During the session, confidence is really high. How is that possible? Very simple. Because before the session, they have a lot of thinking. During the session, there's no thinking. They're with another human being. They're with the client. So there's no thinking. So what most people think is, okay, to have a simpler life, when I have less thinking, when I'm calm, oh, my life seems very simple. And that's true. Because you have a whole lot less thinking about your life. So it feels more simple. You get more clarity about your life. Now I'm going to show you an example here. This is Paddy, Paddy Buddha, right? Can you see that? Oh, let me put this over here. There we go. Okay. This is one of those snow globes, right? Now, when you're, when you're, um, when you're sitting and relaxed, you're very clear. And you can make very clear decisions about your life and how to make it, how to make it simple. Now, a simple question to ask yourself, I, I ask my clients all this all the time. What's one small thing that you can do that will create a more simple life for you? What's one small thing that you can do today that would make your life more simple? What's one thing that you can do today that you already know how to do that would create more simplicity in your life? Now, look at the snow globe. No thinking, completely relaxed. Life is simple. Oh, yeah, I've got this major problem going on right now. And major problem, big problem is a lot of thinking. Because there's no such thing as a big problem or a small problem. People, people give meaning to whether it's a big small problem or small problem. Because I could tell my problems to my, to my coach and he say, oh, that's not a big problem. I'm like, yeah, it is, Steve. It's a really big problem. Why? Because I got a lot of thinking on, I'm making a lot of meaning that it's a big problem. My coach is like, he, he has less thinking on it, so it's less of a problem. Now, when we're clear and relaxed, we can make very clear decisions. It's a good time to hit send. But when we're caught in all our thinking, then our life doesn't look simple at all. Our life looks very clouded and like there's a lot going on. And you can't really see the inner Buddha. You can't really see the inner wisdom. You can't hear clarity. But our, our mind is made such that if you wait, your thinking will relax, just like this, just like the snow globe. The snow inside there is all your thinking. 
And so it's built into our system that eventually your thinking will settle. And when your thinking will settle, things look more simple. My coach said it to me a long time ago when I was telling him how hard my life was and how difficult it was to build my coaching business. He said, Dermot, the reason it's really difficult for you to see how to build your business is because you're not seeing it clearly. I said, I said, what do you mean I'm not seeing it clearly? I am seeing it clearly. I'm seeing clearly, Steve, that, that building my business is not working. And he's like, no, he says, you, you misunderstand me. The reason it doesn't look, the reason it looks difficult to you is because you're not seeing it simply. You're not seeing it clearly. Now think about this, everyone. And I thought about it and he was right. I'll have a problem in my head. Oh, my life is far from simple. It's it, my life is very complicated. And I may go to the shower and I'm scrubbing in the shower. That's a really terrible action of scrubbing in the shower with my hat on, but you get the idea. Scrubbing in the shower, life is wonderful, relaxed, totally relaxed, not much thinking about anything. That's what I should do. And in a moment, in an insight, sight from within, you get the idea. And you're like, boom, that's it. I know exactly what to do. And again, the genius of, of whoever created this whole show is that every idea that you get, every insight, insight that you get comes with its own package. It comes with its own instructions. It's like, uh, you know, when you buy the new Hoover, Hoover, when you buy the new vacuum, it comes with instructions on how to maintain it, how to clean it, how to use it, everything, everything is in the instruction manual. The perfect design of the universe is so, but here's how we get into trouble. So you get an idea and you go, boom, I know exactly what I got to do. Life is simple. The problem has now become clear and what to do has now become clear. And with that insight, you get instructions. Oh, I know what to do. I'm going to call that guy. I'm going to say this and this to him. I'm going to ask him, blah, blah, blah. And that'll solve the problem. See it all the time in my, all the time. Now, everyone has moments of wisdom, of insight. They never come in moments of stress, rarely. They come in moments of calm. They come in moments of when you're settled, when your thinking is settled. That's when the moments come, when the thinking is settled, when there's no snow obscuring. Because wisdom, wisdom is like, uh, Johnny, uh, Dermot's got a lot of thinking right now, so uh, not a good time. There's no way we're going to get in there with an insight. There's no way we're going to get in there with uh, some clarity about this problem that he has. So why don't we just hang out, Johnny? We'll have a cup of tea and a biscuit, and we'll hang out, and we'll wait for his thinking to relax. And when his thinking relax, we'll rush over, and we'll give him the idea that he's looking for. Or we could wait till he gets in the shower, because he's pretty relaxed then. Although I don't really like watching him in the shower, but that's a good time to give him the insight. Like we get these moments of insight when we're, you know, from, from, from difficult life, complicated life to very simple life. So we feel our thinking in the moment. That's how the brain works. That's how the mind works. We feel our thinking in the moment. It's really, it's really simple. It's a really, really simple design. We feel our thinking in the moment. A thought comes in, right? Our thoughts are not our own. They're coming in from somewhere. I don't know. Radio thought thought in the sky here. They come into our brain thoughts all day long. We're not thinking all our thoughts. There's no way. You'd have to be a master at thinking all your thoughts all day long. And they reckon 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day is what you have. So you're not thinking up those thoughts. They come in, you grab a thought, and then you start thinking about it. And when you think about it, you feel that thinking. And that thinking you call stress, worry, anxiety, all those things. 
Now, the great news is the, the kindness of the design is so that, that when you're muddy, when you're cloudy, when you've got a thought storm going on in your head, the kindness of the design is so that that thought storm, like every storm, must pass. There's no storm, uh, uh, storm in the world that has, that has lasted for 20 or 50 years. Eventually, it must settle. Right? You've heard the outside world is a, is a replica of the inside world. What goes on in the outside goes on in the inside. What goes on in the inside is reflected on the outside. That's our thoughts. Our thoughts come in, we start thinking about them, we feel them, and then we say, this outside thing here is causing me to feel this way. It's not, it's not so. A, 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 a horrific example of that is Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning. Great book, Man, Man's Search for Meaning. Now, Viktor Frankl was uh, a person who was put into Auschwitz during the Second World War. And uh, he, every day he would have to bury people that he knew. He would see people going to the gas chambers. I mean, horrific stuff. And he realized that his experience, and now he wasn't doing any spiritual bypass where it's like, my life's falling around me, but hey, everything is good. Everything is wonderful. Everything is fine. He recognized that his world that his experience was coming through him that it was coming from him and not to him and he was able to be calm present even cheerful at times during that during that horror why because he saw how his thinking was creating the feelings in his body so powerful that, that's a pretty huge example of that quite, quite, quite intense. Okay. So let's wrap this part of the show up in terms of living a simpler life. You don't have to try and control your thinking. You can't do that. I tried to do it for years. I would affirm myself, affirm myself. I feel good. I feel good. I'm happy. I'm, I'm abundant. I'm worthy. Now those things help. Don't get me wrong. But when you notice how much thinking you have, when you pause for a moment and, and notice how much thinking you're in, as soon as you notice the thinking that you're in, the thinking starts to settle. So you don't have to, like you wouldn't, you wouldn't be inside the snow globe and you wouldn't start running around grabbing all these flakes and pulling them to the ground, all the thought flakes. Oh, let me pull them to the ground. Let me wrestle all these thought flakes. Like, you, that'd be crazy. You, you'd never be able to bring all those thought flakes to the ground, all that thinking. But if you wait, thinking settles on its own. Just like every, every storm in nature settles eventually. And the reason that we then have more thought storms in our head is we start generating the thinking. And with the thinking always comes the feeling. Thinking and feeling are interlocked, always. Just like, just like the thinking inside this snow globe. It's all part of one unit. All part of one unit, same as us. Our thinking and our feeling are, are interlocked in the same way that our three brains are interlocked, our reptilian, emotional, and neocortex. They're wrapped, they're three brains wrapped into one head, one system three parts. So our thinking and our feeling are, 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 are the same way. Powerful. So all you got to do is here's your homework. You don't have to change your thinking, reaffirm your thinking, affirm your thinking, do positive thinking, psychoanalyze your thinking. All you got to do is notice when you're in thinking. Or as, as Eckhart Tolle says, notice the now. Because the breath is the only thing that's happening in the now. And our thinking 
the, re the, the reason that we get into trouble is our thinking is in the past or the present, not here or now. But when you bring your thinking to the now, to here, you don't have to do that physically. You can just allow your thinking to settle. It will. It will settle. I don't care how much thinking you have about a problem that's larger than life. We go in and out of our thinking all day long. And we're not doing that consciously. We're not doing that directly, intently, purposely. We just go in and out of thinking all day long. That's part of the design. And when you notice when you have a lot of thinking about something, not a good time to hit send. The brain is on overload. Wouldn't it be nice though, like if the brain could, if my brain could stop to think and then never start up again. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> well, it stopped. Whoa. <laughs> we get great insights, you know, when we, when we, when we, uh, when we allow our, our thinking to settle. Now, there are things that you can do for that, you know, yoga and meditation, all those things I highly encourage my clients to do. You can do all those things. But built into the system, into your system, into your mind, is your th your thinking will settle and when you have less thinking you have a whole lot less feeling about x y and z very powerful in terms of living a simple life noticing your thoughts and not noticing them like oh there was another thought oh there was another thought but just noticing when you are in a lot of thinking because If it looks difficult, you're not seeing it clearly. All right. Here's a question for you. What would simplify my life even more? I have it on my, on my, on my board, on my wall. It's a question that I ask myself every day. I say, what would, what would simplify my life even more? either in this moment or what would simplify my life today. I ask myself that every day when I'm doing a project or with, I'm with a client, I'll often ask, Hey, what would simplify this project? What's one thing that you could do that would simplify your life or this project even more? What's one thing Dermot? Yeah. By the way, the brain in terms of simplification or simplifying things, the brain loves one thing at a time. You know why so many, but well, apparently 77% of Americans are stressed. And the reason is because of multitasking. In the 50s and the 60s and the baby boomers time. And, and, and it's the reason actually that the man's brain has less stress than the woman's. Woman's brain is bigger than a man's brain. And a woman's brain is designed to multitask. It's designed to hold the baby, breastfeed the baby, grab the other baby, do the washing, make the this, make the that. It's designed. It's designed to multitask. It's designed to do many things. Man's brain, one thing. The next thing. The next thing. The next thing. That's why when, ladies, when you're talking to the men and you're telling them X, Y, and Z and they're doing something, they are not listening. I, sh I, I probably shouldn't tell you this. The men are like, Dermot, don't tell them that. But it's true. Reason? Not because we don't care. It's because our brains are designed for one thing and one thing only at a time. And, 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 and women's brain are designed to multitask. But see, here's the problem with multitasking. And I see it when I coach women in my coaching or I have, I have women um, in the school and they're trying to do too much, they get stressed. They have a lot of thinking. They have, they have, it's like they have 10 windows open on the computer and they're trying to read the 10 windows. That's a lot of thinking. Now, men get stressed too. There's no question about it. And women, their capacity to take in more information is greater than men's because of the size of the, because their brain is bigger. But the complication, the, the part of, of, of a simpler life goes out the window is because they try to do too much. Now that's for women and for men. 
but women are built to do to take in more information to be able to do more but that can be a real challenge for women to try and, and to do too much so a great question that i often ask women when i'm coaching is what's one thing that you could do that would simplify your life and it's sometimes it's like dermot i just need to turn off my phone Dermot, I need to close one of the windows on the computer. Dermot, I need to ask my husband or my partner for help. Dermot, I need to communicate something that I have not been willing to communicate with my boss. That would make my life more simple. So take one thing in your life that if you were to, if you were to get an answer for, or if you were to complete, or if you were to express, or if you were to um, solve, or if you were to take an action step on, that it would simplify your life even more, what would that one thing be? Very powerful, very powerful. Now, I want to share something very practical with you around living a simpler life, and it's called the weekly review. Now, this is something that really has simplified my life, and it's very practical, so I'm going to go to the practical now. We've kind of been we've kind of been a little bit in the in the in the in the possibility in the in the, uh, uh, the cosmic stage, right? We've kind of been chunking up into big bits. I'm going to bring it down to very something very practical. I do a weekly review, and this is really simple. I encourage you all to play with this. It is so so helpful in simplifying your life. It's very practical in nature. So. Every week on Fridays, it can be any day, but usually Fridays is a great day to end your week because it's coming up to the weekend. So you're not thinking about everything that just happened in the week on Saturday and Sunday when you need to be relaxing. And Monday's not a great day, day to do your weekly review because um, it's the start of the week and, you've, and the energy of the week, Monday comes and it pulls you into the week. And the weekly review is very simple. I take an hour, and usually at the start of the month, it takes a little, a little longer. But I take an hour every Friday, and it's a specific day and a specific time. 4 to 5 p.m. on Fridays, my partner knows that, hey, Dermot's doing his review. I turn off my phone. I turn off the computer, everything, and I do my review. Now, what is the review? The review is as I sit down and I look at what got done last week? So I have a, you know, I have, I, I like, I like wall calendars. I have a big, you know, dry eraser board. I actually have three of them. <laughs> I like dry eraser boards. Um, I like doodling, and I write on the things that I'm going to do for the week. So in my weekly review, I look at, okay, what are some of the things that I did not get to this week? So I look at my dry erase board or my Google calendar, whatever it is, and I look and I see what are some of the things that I wanted to do that I were on the calendar but did not get done this week. And I take them from the calendar and I add them to next week. Now, I've taken all that stuff in my head, all that thinking that I carry around with me on the weekend, and the thinking goes, and I go, I'm not thinking about it on the weekend because I've already thought about it on Friday. I'm not thinking about what I got to do next week on Saturday and Sunday because I've already thought it, uh, about it on Friday. Now, this is really powerful, and it takes some time to create the habit. I, I will be honest about that. Um, but you could start with your weekly review 10 minutes. Hey, on Friday, I'm going to sit down for 10 minutes. I'm going to look at all the things that I, that, I, that I got done this week and appreciate. Well done, myself. And I'm going to look at the things that didn't get done, and I'm going to put them on my calendar for next week. Now, that's the first part of the review. Now, that will change your life. If you do that, it will change your life. I guarantee it. My weeks are set up on Friday, and I don't think about them. I go into the, I go into the weekend happy as Larry. I go into Monday. And now I don't have to think about what I'm doing for the week because I've already thought about it. 
and I go to my calendar on Monday, I write it down, you know, 5.30 to 7.30 yoga meditation, 8 to 9, I write, and then 9 to 10, I got a client, 10 to 11, I'm going to be doing a talk, uh, 11 to 12, blah, blah, blah. Now, you don't have to be so specific with your time, although it's very helpful for the brain to simplify, give it times, give it tasks and give it times. Very helpful for the brain. Great for your thinking because you know when you're, when you're planning a trip and you leave it till Friday and you're going on Saturday and you're like, oh my God, I've been thinking about it the whole week, but I haven't done anything. Now it's Friday and I'm leaving tomorrow and the brain goes, <sighs> and the brain says, what do I need to get done in the next hour or two hours so that we can leave tomorrow? Very powerful. So when you give the brain a task and you give it a time, you say, hey, next Tuesday at two o'clock from two to three, I'm going to do my review or I'm going to, um, you know, work out. Uh, the brain already starts to create that for you. It's very, very powerful. So in your review, you look at step one, look at what you got done, appreciate yourself. Step two, look at what you, what you didn't get done and put it on the calendar for next week. Not with judgment. Not taking out the judgment hammer. Oh, I didn't get it done. It's just like, oh, hey, so I didn't get to that. Maybe I overestimated what I could do. Maybe I underestimated what I could do. That will lead to a simple life. I'm telling you. Without all your thinking, you'd have a really simple life. Without all the thinking about your life and how difficult and hard it is, and don't get me wrong, I know life is challenging. Trust me on that one. I've been dealing my own health challenges for a while. Life can be tough. But we make meaning of the toughness. We make meaning about those experiences through our thinking. And then we, 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 we label, we put that, that label or whatever the thinking is on, on the experience. So step three, if there is a step three, step one is appreciate yourself for what you did last week. Step two is take what you didn't get done last week and put it on next week. And step three is, is there a step three? No, it's only two steps. It's really simple. I'm trying to think of step three. Now, when I say step three could be, if you think about you put it on your calendar. So step two is to take everything you didn't get done and put it on your calendar. And I encourage people to take out their calendar and write, okay, these are all the things that I didn't get done. So now on Monday at 10 o'clock, I'm going to do that. And on Tuesday at 11 o'clock, write it on your calendar. I'm going to do that. And so you make those times sacred. So when I have certain things that I need to do, I put them on my, 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 my Google calendar. And so then that's blocked out. So clients and people who want to contact me or, you know, do work with me, that's blocked out. That's sacred time. Now I'm going to give you another practical thing that I do with clients. I do it for myself every year. Uh, I do it in our house and it's called the leaks, L E A K S leaks. Now, talk about wanting to have a simpler life. I, get a, I create a leak list, and I'm just looking at my leak list as, a, as I'm talking to you. It's pretty much done. Every January, I sit down with a blank piece of paper. That wasn't blank, but you get the idea. Blank piece of paper and a pen, usually my favorite, my favorite color. And I, I sit and I, I look at all the things that are physical in my house. So I look at, okay, I go from room to room and I, and I look at, okay, what, what projects have I started here? What projects have I started and not finished? And what projects do I need to start? So maybe I look at all my clothes in the bedroom and I go, okay, so one of the projects is get rid of 30% of those clothes. So I write that down in my physical leak list. And a leak is, Something that you're thinking about all the time. Oh, you know, I should really throw out those clothes. Oh, I should really, you know, mend the door in the bathroom. Oh, I should really ask my, my friend to come and help me with the garden. Oh, I should really pay that blah, blah, blah. All these things are on your mind 
and they're making your life very complicated. Your life is not simple. When you've got a hundred windows open in your brain, life is not simple. Life is very complicated. Life can be very hard. It can be very challenging when you're trying to do too much, when you're trying to solve too much, when you're, when you're thinking too much. So I walk through the house, I go to every room and I see, okay, what's broke? Oh, the light bulb. Okay, that's been broken for a year. I keep thinking about it. I've spent hours and hours thinking. I really should, every time I look at the light bulb, I see the light bulb and I should change the light bulb. <laughs> so I write that on my, my physical leak list. I write anything that's broken in, that, broken in the house that needs to be fixed. I write anything in the house, a project. Oh, I started fixing the door. I need to get a new door. I'm going to take care of that. I had bulbs that were gone, like the bulb underneath the, the cooker was broken. And, 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 and my girlfriend had kept, hey, Dermot, would you get a bulb? I can't see any, the food. Would you get a bulb? Oh, yeah, I'll get a bulb. Yeah, I'll get a bulb. Six months went by. And we finally got a bulb. I was thinking about it for months and months. We were talking about it, and it took 10 minutes to go to the hardware store and get a bulb. So to do the item always takes long, it takes shorter amount of time than actually um, all the amount of time that you think about it. That's true. Okay. And that's your physical leak. Now you do your emotional leak, where you look at all the people in your life that you're trying to avoid all the people that you've had miscommunication with in the, uh, in the, in the 12 step program is in a 12 step program for eight years. And one of the things I, I did the 12 steps, I think I went through them four times with a sponsor and then one time with a professional sponsor. And one of the things in there is that you make amends to the people that you've, you've hurt. And that's kind of like the leak list. You go and you say, Hey, look, these are all the things that I did that were hurtful. And I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I wasn't, I wasn't the best, the best version of me was not, was not available back then. It is now. And so I'm apologizing. Will you forgive me? I know those things were hurtful, but I wasn't myself. And I'll do my best in the future not to be hurtful again to you. That's powerful. Now, you can do that with the emotional leak. I take my clients through this. I say, write a list of all the people that you need to make amends to. Write all the, a list of all the people who you've miscommunicated something to. Write all a list of all the people in your life, parents, family, friends, colleagues, nieces, whoever, whoever it is. And get very specific about what the miscommunication was on your end, not on theirs. You're doing this for you. The 12 step work is about you. Other people benefit, but it's about you cleaning up your mess. And so with the emotional leak, you're cleaning up all the thinking you have about uh, uh, people and relationships. And in the physical leak, you're cleaning up all the, all the leaks you have about uh, places and things. Very powerful. So a physical leak list and emotional leak list. And then I, I often ask them to do a spiritual leak list where I'll ask them to write down is what are some things spiritually that could really help you? You know, there's, there's two lines that most you'll, you'll hear a lot of different self development gurus talk about. There's the, there's the spiritual line and there's the heart and there's the physical line the vertical line and the horizontal line of life. The horizontal line of life is your journey from birth to death. It's your physical line of life. And your spiritual line or the vertical line is your spiritual growth. When you started on your journey, where are you in levels of consciousness? Where are you? Where are you in terms of your level of awareness? Both of those lines are playing out all the time. So it's really wonderful for your emotional and spiritual growth to do that emotional line. So I'll ask people, hey, what would help you spiritually to grow? Because if you want to have a simpler life, the best way to do that is to have more awareness about where you are, what you're doing, what kind of thinking you're stuck in, what kind of thinking you're involved in. 
And a great way to do that is true awareness, true spiritual practices. Now, spiritual practice can be something as simple as slowing down. One of the greatest things that I ever learned from my coach was to slow down. Be with, the, be with who, you're, who you're talking to. Slow down. It's a powerful spiritual practice. And you don't have to force yourself to slow down. You just got to notice when you're not. As Eckhart Tolle says, you know, when you notice, when you notice that you're not in the now, that noticing brings you into the now. Thinking is the same, exact same way. When you notice that it's, oh, this is so complicated. It's not the thing that's complicated. The thing is just the thing. It's not complicated or simple. It's just the thing. It's neutral. There's a neutral designation on that. But we designate whether it's simple or whether it's difficult. When you notice that you're in all that thinking, that's enough for, the, for, the, for all the thinking in the snow globe to slow down. Very powerful. So let's start to wrap up our conversation today. I sincerely hope it's been helpful. Oh, and I've got to do my top 11. So why don't I do my top 11 list? This is something I used to do for years in the show. Top 11 list. Top 11 things you absolutely do not need to know about. So today it's top 11 things you absolutely do not need to know about Irish stew. All right, here we go. I grew up on Irish stew. Well, porridge chips, white bread, and Irish stew. Number 11, 239's, 239 beans are in an Irish stew. If you add one more, you've got 240. Think about that, 240. Uh, number 10, I went to the doctor thinking the Irish stew was causing me problems. The doctor said, Murphy, I can't seem to diagnose your problem. It must be the drink. Don't worry, doctor, I said. I'll come back when you're sober. Number nine, a sign in an Irish pub said, all the Irish stew you can eat for one pound. So my friend Paddy went in and asked for two pounds worth. Okay, these might not, they might not be my best jokes, but however, stay with me. Number eight, Irish stew is so hearty, you can eat it or build a wall with it. Number seven, Mrs. Murphy stuck her head out the window. Where's your dog, Connor? Oh, I had to put him down. Oh, dear, was he mad? Well, he wasn't too pleased about it, that's for sure. Dad. Dad, are we Irish? Shut up and finish your stew. Number five. Paddy to Murphy. Murphy... Uh, why are you pouring that stew into your computer? Oh, I'm sending food to America via email. Number four. I like women. I like my women how I like my Irish stew. Hot, strong, and beefy. Number six. There was a sign outside an Irish pub. It said Irish soup for the day. Whiskey. Number two. Irish stew is not for the hungry. It's for the brave. All right. Number one thing you absolutely do not need to know about Irish stew. An Irishman. An Irishman is someone who, after eating Irish stew, clears the dishes and gives the impression he's made the whole dinner. All right. Dave, if I was Dave Letterman, then I'd, I'd throw it behind me. All right, let's wrap up, everyone. A coach once said to me, Dermot, if, if you want to think less, do more. And if you want to do more, think less. And so if you want to have a simple life, if you want to, if you want to simplify your life more, Notice when you're caught up in all your raggedy thinking. Notice when you're caught up in a lot of anxious thinking. There's no such thing as anxiety. It's anxious thinking. There's no such thing as stress. There's stressful thinking. 
There's no thing out here called anxiety. There's no thing out here called stress. It's thinking that makes it so. As a man think it, so is he in his heart, as the parable goes. Well, that's true, because as we think, we feel in our heart. We think with our head, we feel with our heart. Thinking comes through the head into the heart. I mean. Second thing is to simply take some time and do your weekly review. Start with 10 minutes. Ask yourself, in terms of a, of a weekly review, what's doable for me? What, what, what could I absolutely do? What could I do that would simplify my life? What's one thing that I could do to create more simplicity in my life? And I see my sister here, spuds were such comfort food. They were, sis. They actually, they really were. <laughs> um, so take 10 minutes every week. Start with, now Friday's a good day to do your review. It really is. Um, but maybe Fridays don't work for you. Try. I tried Sundays. Sundays didn't work. I said I'd do it, and then Sunday came. I turned the TV on. I was like, oh, I'm not going to do that. So find a day that works. You might have to experiment and take 10 minutes and do your, your physical leak. Look at all the things in your home that are broken or need to be fixed. Write them down and then put them on the calendar for when, you, when you're going to do them. And, and commit to doing them. Because I guarantee you, it takes, it takes a lot less time to actually do the thing than it does about all the thinking that you had about it. Powerful, very powerful. And when you're caught up in your thinking, don't hit send. Not a good time to hit send. Not a good time. So when you got a lot of thinking about something, notice it. And, and, and the minute you notice it, you'll start to, this thinking will start to slow down. Very powerful practice, just being aware, just noticing. All right, next week, let me see, I had my... Uh, Next week, we're going to be talking about, on the Celtic Coach Radio Show, we're going to be talking about serving with a fearless heart. A lot of people out there want to serve the world. And a lot of people that I come in contact with, that I, that I work with, say, I want to serve the world in a big way. I want to change the world, Dermot. And I say, that's impossible. Now, now it, may, it, it, it might be probable but in the six months that we're going to work together, how about we, we start with the doable? We start with changing your world. As Gandhi says, you be the change that you want to see in the world. So I'm going to talk about that, how we can look at serving the world with a fearless heart and bring it down to something manageable. Because serving the world, oh my God, I'm going to change the world. That's really, that's a lot for the brain to think about. And the brain is like, whoa. And it's kind of a, a lot of people use it as self-sabotage. I want to change the world. And it's so big and so grand of a vision, they never start. So we're going to talk about serving the world with a fearless heart. I'm going to talk about fear. I'm going to talk about the nature of fear. Where does fear come from? There's no outside thing called fear. So I'm going to talk about where does fear come from. And I'm also going to talk about, give you a lot of different coaching questions on how to serve the world. Now, whether you're, whether you're, doesn't matter, you know, whether you want to do it on a big scale or a small scale, or you just want to serve your family, you want to serve your community, you want to serve the people that you work with, you want to serve your brothers and sisters, doesn't matter. Serving comes in, comes in all, all types. As Gandhi said, serving is its own reward. And, and as, as Martin Luther King said, you know, uh, everyone can be great because everybody can serve. And so we're going to talk about how do you serve the world with a fearless heart? I'm going to do some coaching with you, share some questions that are really going to help. All right. Until the next time, coaches, think big, have fun, stay curious. We'll see you all next week. If you want a copy of this show, 
it'll be here on Facebook, which you can also pick it up. Um, um, if you're listening in today and you want to have a copy of it, you can um, pick it up on SoundCloud. Just go to The Celtic Coach on SoundCloud. Um, or you can go to YouTube, my YouTube channel, thecelticcoach.com, and um, you can pick up a, t a show there, the audio or the video. Until then, I hope this has been helpful. Think big, have fun, and stay curious. We'll talk to you all soon, coaches. Cheers.